Hey guys, how's it going? Eric Norris here. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about a very key, clever, savvy strategy that you can do in order to never have to pay taxes on your real estate ever again in your life. And this is simply called the 1031 exchange. For those of you that are not familiar with the 1031 exchange, I'll give you the info right here. I'm on the uh, Investopedia website. And also I just got off the phone with a 1031 exchange agent that gave me all the 411 that I needed to know in order for me to do any of this strategy. So what is a 1031 exchange? So I'm on investopedia.com and it says, uh, how savvy investors use 1031s to defer capital gains and build wealth, right? That's the whole point of this. Don't give the government the money. Um, so basically what a 1031 exchange is, it's a swap of one real estate investment property for another that allows capital gains taxes to be deferred. The way the term, the 1031 exchange came about, it's basically that's the code in the IRS system. So uh, the IRC section 1031 has many moving parts that real estate investors must understand before attempting its use. An exchange can only be made with like kind properties and the IRS rules limit its use with vacation properties. There are also tax implications and timeframes that may be problematic. So for instance, you need to have 45 days to identify the next properties and you get three property choices. And of course, you know, <clears throat> the number one choice is usually the one you want. The second and third are kind of like, you don't want to pigeonhole yourself into buying a bad property just to avoid paying the taxes. So it's it can be kind of a stressful time because you're at a time crunch to find that next property. But if you can utilize this right, it will save you thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars if you're up in that higher bracket. Um, so yeah, so basically, uh, I'm actually looking into this right now. I just got off the phone with a uh, 1031 exchange agent and they gave me the 411, all the info about uh, how the process works and what kind of properties I can go after. So uh, one of the questions I asked her, I said, can I purchase possibly, because right now I have a property at a certain price, let's just say it's 525,000. I have to find something that's either 525,000 or greater. And um, I said, I asked her, I said, could this be a single family residence? She said, yes. I said, could it be a, another duplex or another rental property? She said, yes. I asked her if it could be commercial real estate and she said yes. Um, so, and I'm still trying to find out, she's gonna email me back if storage units are also considered in that like kind, same criteria. Um, so, but basically, uh, what the other thing I could do, I asked her this as well. So if my selling price for this current property is 525, I can also find two other properties. Let's say I find a property at 300,000 and let's just say the other is 300,000, which is 600,000. So I could literally do a 1031 exchange into those next two properties, which is super cool. Because if you have one property, that's only producing a certain amount of income. Two properties, cash flow starts building up even more, right? As long as the numbers work, right? Um, so anyway, uh, the other thing she said that was interesting, I said, what if I happen to only find a property that's 300,000 and it's below the amount that I paid for the 525? And she said, basically, you can do that as well. You can do a 1031 exchange on that as well, but the only difference is whatever the remainder is, that's what you'll get taxed on. So that's good. Instead of getting taxed on the full amount, you're getting only taxed on what's left over from those proceeds of the sale. <clears throat> so I found that fascinating. That is something that I did not know and that was a great piece of information I learned today and I'm giving it to you guys. So you guys now have that information as well. And um, you know, all these things that I'm mentioning too, um, I'm not a tax professional. So uh, all, these, all these tidbits of quality information I'm giving you guys that are of value, um, you always want to double check with your 1031 exchange agent if you're looking into that process. Um, a lot of times if you're looking to try to find a 1031 exchange holding company, um, one of your best bets is usually just ask your real estate agent. Uh, in my case, my real estate agent happens to be also an investor. So that is extremely helpful for me. And that's what you'll want to find too if you're investing in real estate. Make sure you find an agent that is also an investor, unless you are an agent yourself and you are doing it. So um, so that's basically the gist of the 1031 exchange. And what's so great about that is basically, 
you're deferring the taxes each time. You can do this over and over again for your whole lifetime and literally defer the taxes and never have to pay capital gains tax on any properties you buy and sell. The only hard part is that time frame of window, that 45 day window can be very strict and stringent and stressful. And a lot of times you might not even be able to find the deal. Depends on your market because we got low inventory, right? So, uh, but anyway, it is an option and it's a great way to save. I'd probably be saving somewhere around $53,000 on taxes on this property if I'm able to do a 1031. So um, that's kind of the gist of it. I hope this information finds you well. I hope you got some value out of this. I'm here to help you guys. Uh, feel free and leave a comment or if you guys have any questions. And um, I just ask that if you did find value, please like, please subscribe. And I hope you guys have a great day. Happy real estate investing. Eric Norris. Peace out.